Welcome back to Wall Street. A Home Depot co-founder and author of the new book, I Love Capitalism, Ken Langone is with us this weekend. And Ken, what I love about you, and I've said this before, is the principles and the loyalties that you have. Not to mention you have this marriage for 61 years, 63 years you know each other, and you're so loyal to one another. That's a beautiful thing. But you have principles to do the right thing. And I saw them front and center when you defended Dick Grasso and you fought Elliot Spitzer. That had to be a tough time. It was an exciting time, believe it or not, because I knew we were right and I knew we were going to prevail. But Maria, I get credit for being loyal to Dick. What I was fighting for was defending my judgment and why I thought, as a member of the comp committee, that what we gave Dick, he earned and deserved. It happened, coincidentally, that this benefited Dick. But the reality was, I knew how we did it. I knew we did it right. I knew we had a process that we followed. And I, more importantly, knew that everybody else knew mm -hmm. and everybody else agreed. All of a sudden, some of these people were Sergeant Schultz and Mash. I'm not sure. I may have been there. I could have forgotten. I could have seen it. Maybe I didn't see it. I watched it firsthand on the floor of the New York okay. Stock Exchange and how Dick really created such an, an event when somebody rang the opening bell. He would travel to Italy and China and come back 12 hours later. When Dick took over, there were 1,200 listings. When Dick got fired, there were 2,800 listings. Wow. It took them 200 years to get 1,200 listings. He got uh, 1,600 more in uh, seven years. And then there's GE, longtime board member of yep. GE. Uh, you love that company. Oh, you I always love loved that company. I love what Jack... The and way, you helped Jack, you supported Jack as he built one of the greatest companies in the world. Jack built a company that was made to withstand the test of time. So what happened? The culture, first of all, changed dramatically. And I can't prove this, but I see there was a willful effort, principally by the leader, to unjack General Electric. Everything that Jack knew and stood for. Jack was meticulous. He'd go quarterly to every major business unit and get a complete review. Who's your successor? What are you weak on? What are you strong on? What are your worries? What do you need from us? I mean, this, this QEC, I mean, it was unbelievable, and he was relentless about it. Jack also had a great relationship with all of his people that endures to this day. Me too. When I was at CNBC, I, I loved hearing from Jack Welch, um, and he would send me a note. Right. He would send me notes, say, good job on this, good, glad you did this, and that means a lot. Uh, that pushes a person forward. It pushed me forward. You, the key is motivate people. Will GE ever come back? Not like it was, uh, and whole, a whole lot smaller than it was. Mm. It, the we opportunity, the opportunity, look, it's easy to second guess the other guy, and I, I don't want to do that. On the other hand, if, who dares ignore history is doomed to repeat it. Okay? I think that some of the strategic decisions that were made at General Electric were horrible. Asset capital allocation was a disaster. This Alstrom deal is a nightmare. We, with great fanfare, we bought Amersham. You never hear about it anymore. No, you don't. Okay? Uh, to me, they got out of the financial services business at exactly the wrong time. Maybe they should have gotten out of it. But that was that done. Energy. But that was done, in my mind, to accommodate Wall Street. Wall Street didn't like them being in that business. So, okay, we'll get out of that business. The key is if you know your business and you're able look at what Jack did with GE Capital and look at how it grew and look at the enormous contribution it made to the whole game. Where do you find growth right now? Tell us about Invimed. And right. where you're allocating your capital okay. today and where you find investment opportunities. I'm looking, I'm looking right now at small to medium-sized companies, okay? Because I can get to know them better. I can get to know the managements better. If you're right, the chance of significant compounding of growth, w one of the companies I like right now, for example, is First Data Corporation. Frank Bisignano. Frank, Frank Bisignano. Great operator. I think they're in the sweet spot right now. I think more importantly, they came through a rough patch. He kept it together. He's, pay, he's cleaning up the balance sheet. And he's a good man. And they have a great partner in Kravis, in Colbert Kravis. They own 60%. Frank's got all the time in the world to do it right, and he's doing it right, and he is a great man. Yeah. So I like, I like that, and I think uh, a simple calculation, I think in the next five years the stock will double. So if that happens, I'm getting about 14% a year on my money. And Maria, I think going forward, it's going to be very difficult, very difficult to get higher than high single-digit growth uh, uh, compound interest on in your money. Uh, I like the public storage business, and we're investing in a private way there. 
Uh, I like oil and gas for developed and proven reserves only. I'm not a speculator. So we have an investment play there. Uh, I like, as I say, back, I love the medical field. We're living longer, thank God. Yes. And the longer we live, the more health care needs we have. Ken, thank you. And thank you for writing this book. Thank you for I having me. I love capitalism and American story. Check it out. My special thanks to Ken Langone. Good thanks, to see you, Marie. sir.